All right, so for those of you just tuning in, we're about to play 4v4 on the crazy special map, Holy Line. In this game, I'll be playing as the Malay Civilization. I will briefly flash their tech tree on the screen. But if you want to learn more about the Malay, I definitely recommend checking the video description below for a link to my full Civilization overview of the Malay. In this video, I'm going to try and utilize as much of their entire tech tree as humanly possible. Holy Line's a ridiculous map, which you'll see in just a moment. And also, I have titled my map after the famous lobby names that we used to have back in the day in GameSpy Arcade when people would populate their names with the most ridiculous symbols just so that they would get more attention in the browser. Good luck, have fun! I know what you're thinking as well. These teams seem pretty much in your favor. Uh, Resonance 22, what's, what's going on? Let's go, don't worry, we'll find a way to lose this game. It's okay. I'm pretty sure the map size just went from 6 to 8, so that's that's a good sign. You know, I, I feel like the teams are consistently stacked heavily against me on stream, even though they don't really seem like it. And it so turns out that that's because usually I'll give myself uh, a ton of really you know, more lower-rated players on my team than the opposing one, and then it just so turns out that it doesn't even out if you do that. Uh, that I cannot make up for that, so... Uh, we'll see if this one actually turns out to be a GG. But I'm playing as the Malay, which are a really weird civilization. On a map like this, I feel like they're not actually well complemented. Uh, this is a really not special map. I think you guys will find this match entertaining, hopefully. Uh, so Holy Line, the two teams are split by a line of relics. A solid line of relics that units can't pass through, except when they glitch through it. Hopefully they fix that bug. <laughs> used to be you could, like, dresh on this map by glitching your militia through the, through the walls. Uh, if you walked at it from, like, a diagonal angle. And there are, I believe, about 30 relics that separate the the two teams. So what this means is that, obviously, the fast castle age strategy is the go-to build, and it just creates a lot of interesting moments and strategies. This is one of my favorite maps to play with the devs, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this one turns out. I'm going to try and do as much as I can. T, Jack, Shack, Attack. I would like to make some infinite fish traps. I'd like to make some discounted uh, battle elephants, which are, for the Malay, very, very, very bad in the Imperial Age because of all the missing upgrades. The Malay, like, their most, one of their most notable things is that they are missing the last two blacksmith defense armor upgrades for cavalry units, thus giving them some of the worst cavalry in the entire game. Their battle elephants do have a 25% discount, though, which opens up the sometimes oddly viable battle elephant rush, but... The Elite Battle Elephants certainly do fall off quite heavily. Uh, I believe they're also missing Bloodlines too, so that's just an absolute disaster of epic proportions. Right, keep doing some scouting. This should be a very fun game. And of course, if you're new to Age of Empires 2, you can find a link to the playlist of all the tutorials I have in the video description below. You're in the right place if you're looking for expert games, gameplay commentaries, tutorials, etc., as well as videos for a wide variety of other games. You can find my live streaming schedule by going to my Twitch channel and scrolling underneath the video player there. Uh, today we're going to be bold, actually, and yeah, okay, so we're going to lure this this bad boy, and then I'm going to build this house. I'm going to do it without loom. If there is a lag spike that kills this villager, well, that's just how that's just how life is. Oh, not bad, not bad. Hmm. Respectable. We get the, uh, the Resonance 22 seems good. Not bad, not bad. Are there no berry bushes on this map? Cool, so we're gonna have to adapt our build order a little bit, and that sounds good to me. As always, I appreciate all the kind comments and support, uh, especially for the content you do besides Age of Empires 2. Thank you, guys. Our Forerunners has turned down music. Is the music actually too loud? Let me know. I, I feel like it's never... No one's said that to me so far, and I haven't changed my volume settings, and when I look in the OBS volume mixer, it seems like it's actually very quiet. There is water on this map. There are two lakes. There's a lake over here and a lake over here. One of them has an island uh, that is full of stone, and the other is full of gold. It's a very, very interesting dynamic. Did not mean to build that there. See, I could have deleted my town center at that moment. Bet you thought I was going to. But I wasn't born yesterday, not with these wrinkles. Should have had a water buffalo underneath here. A little bit of idle time kind of sucks. I think, uh, is now the time to do another lure? That is the question. What, what's, stat what's the status report here? Yes. 
So Delaying Loom effectively is giving me an extra villager here, which is pretty big. I do not... Be I think there are actually fish on this map, but not that many. I honestly don't remember, so... I uh, will see. Anyone in the chat remind me if there is if it's actually worth docking here for besides map control reasons? Because I know that those those are uh, two islands there, but besides that, are there fish? Oof. Almost scary. So yes, by delaying loom, I'm effectively giving myself a one villager lead because it takes the same amount of time to research loom as it does to create a villager. But I would say that in general, if you're new, absolutely do not risk it. Get Loom early if you're not confident your board learning abilities or the connections in the game are sketchy in any way whatsoever. Don't risk it! There, fish? Music is fine. Okay. I figured. It's always really quiet. <laughs> yes, I was Mysterious Viper. Thank you, CJ. Really glad to hear that, man. We're very pleasantly surprised with how popular SOS has been despite it being an only closed alpha. Like, we... At least I didn't expect this to get nearly as much attention. We were the top four most watched game on Twitch uh, two days in a row, and I haven't been able to keep track of the stats since then because I've been busy at my friend's wedding. Three-day wedding celebration. Pretty cool. Apparently that's a tradition in Pakistan or something like that. It was, uh, it was a very touching wedding. Because uh, I'm very, very happy for my friend, man. And seeing his family tear up there and give them the speech. Oh, my heart grew... Three sizes that day, easily. So as far as general strategy goes, on a map like this, what you want to be doing is going for a fast castle age always. Why? Well, it's pretty straightforward, because there are there's a wall of relics in the middle of the map, and unless you are going for some kind of crazy transport ship rush play, uh, then I really feel like it's a missed opportunity uh, to not just go for Fast Castle Age and eat up those relics. Build an early monastery. Oh, what the hell? That's very fast. See Mongols? These Mayans. Why would you ever go for a nine minute feudal age? He must have made some significant cuts to his economy. I'm not sure if I, I approve of that. Did anyone actually confirm whether or not there were fish here? Because I don't believe there are enough to warrant docking, but I might just be wrong. I'm going to operate with the assumption in mind that it is not worth docking. Uh, that being said, though, I do get fish traps, so if I could just see some fish to verify that it's worth docking, then a late dock is not a bad idea. So what's really sick here is that I can actually add on an additional villager uh, I could even add in two extra villagers, which, uh, you know, I'm actually going to do, yeah. Because I advance 80% faster as the Malay. So what this does is this gives me effectively a... You know, about a two to three villager lead over my opponents, because not only did I skip Loom, but I'm also going to advance 80% faster, allowing me to have extra time to create villagers. This is not a significant eco bonus, though. I have done extensive balance testing. Uh, I, I did this internally for them. Uh, obviously, this was overtuned on release, but if we had been... Oh, no. What? Oh, did God, did he... Uh, so this is exactly why you do make sure that you get Loom early, because he somehow got his scout over here? What? Did he, like, put it in a transport ship, or did he glitch it through the wall and Skybox never fixed that bug? That's actually bullshit. <laughs> this is how we're going to lose this game. This is why you get Loom. Now, we did extensive balance testing on the uh, the Malay thing. Obviously, it was overtuned. I did not decide on the initial 100% thing, uh, but yeah, as an eco... What, so, here's the thing. As an eco bonus, it's not that strong. It's not. It's, it's generally speaking, going to be weaker than something like the Celts Faster Woodcutting. Uh, it's just going to be a lower impact bonus. But the thing is, is though, is that... That's not how you should be looking at the bonus. It's not just a an eco bonus. You can't think of it as the, oh, you know, now I have, like, a, th uh, a two to three villager lead over my opponent. You know, how good is that? You should actually be looking at it from a wide variety of standpoints. Most importantly, I talk about this all the time, but having a tech... What the fuck are they doing? Finish the market. Having a technology advantage means that you get to... What? How am I in here? Excuse me? What? Okay, I kind of wanted that, but whatever. 
gotta be kidding me, man. How did I do that? I'm gonna finish Loom, because I know he has his scout here. Which will delay my castle time slightly, but how did I do that? Alright, I need to... Oh, fuck. I forgot. I just realized that I have to sell food. Oh, but someone already messed up my price. What? That was my original plan, but I got distracted after I, one, noticed that my scout was both gone, and then also... I just don't, I actually don't understand what's going on. I was going to drop, like, a town center over here, but maybe I should start mining the gold early, honestly. I'm going to drop a DC over here. I don't know, man. I don't know how I got in there. And I, and losing that one villager distracted me. <laughs> I'm going to try and pick up a couple relics in the middle if I can. Thank you so much, Brixel Nader, for the sub. Really appreciate it. For those of you who have Amazon Prime, you can actually sub to me for free on Twitch with Twitch Prime. It's pretty nifty. So let's see what other kind of scouting information we have. Well, that's not good. He's got some idols. Always set a gather point with your town center. All, like almost always, there are very few situations where you wouldn't want to. Uh, it just saves it just saves idle time. You want to make sure that your villagers are always doing something. When you're new to an RTS game, in general, it's important to be doing things that are wrong all the time very quickly, rather than doing absolutely nothing at all while you're trying to figure out what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, so this means that if you don't know what units to make, make a wide variety. God, I am like. <laughs> forgetting to do so many things. I'll get down watch now, because I'm distracted. Uh, make sure that you do things such as, uh, you know, constantly create a wide variety of different units, because uh, rather than just wait all day trying to figure out what perfect army comp you're supposed to be uh, going with. It's more important that you have a wide variety of units rather than just, like, one unit that will just get countered super duper easily. So I'm going to put a TC over here. And then a TC over here. You have to watch out for landings. Potentially problematic. Continue scouting. Build this monastery. You definitely want to learn proper build orders and everything, but there's going to be a point when you're so new to a game that that's not even on the table yet. And then that's when you need to just make sure that you're constantly creating villagers and then worry later. Like, learn the fundamentals, basically, before you start worrying about doing some crazy, crazy micro shenanigans. And the fundamentals are, make sure that you have a lot of villagers, then learn where you need to assign them. The fact that people's scouts are glitching through these walls actually totally ruins this map. Like, <laughs> Not only does that stop the monks from being able to pick these, but I lost a villager and that totally ruined my build. Rabbit Tortoise is, uh, he's got the light calf here. It's <laughs> pretty sick. Pretty sure Skybox fixed that bug. I thought I reported that. But I guess that's, that's not a thing. I should probably build another monastery that's even closer. Uh, definitely want to be contesting this. I wonder if the second town center... I mean, if I'm... I'm being honest, I feel like actually one of my town centers should have been a stable. I mean, I wouldn't really have been able to afford that, but still... I do actually think I wanted a stable and a barracks. I mean, I have light calves support from my teammate, so it's not a big deal, but it's just food for thought, you know. I wonder. Hmm. I could see the case for that. Because that way I have something to take care of the enemy monks. But in this case, I can just rely on an ally, I guess. And we should be fine. We'll snag this one. Yes, hopefully, uh, Eden, we will see Master Handed Swordsman and whatnot. Stealth SDS should be on our team. I asked for the two worst players on my team and a Rabbit Tortoise. And it looks like I did not end up getting that. But we'll see. I mean, I feel like I'm playing a Civ that is probably one of the worst possible ones to play on a map like this. Just because... Okay, I guess that's a thing. Just because they don't do too much with infinite gold, which is just something that you have on this map with all these relics. Have archers suck? No, 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 they're fine. I think he's thinking about, like, elephant archers and stuff. A little bit of lag. Just gotta keep my town center working. Alright. 
Still not enough wood. I actually have one too many gold miners. I wasn't sure exactly on the exact balance I would need. Trash with two hands, good with no gold. Right! That's why we're playing as the melee to balance this out. But don't worry. I'll find a way to lose this game somehow. The teams are always, always very unfair, even if they seem like they're in my favor initially. That's just how it always works out. <laughs> we'll see. I, I have a feeling this will be a good one, man. Uh, I, at least I hope so. I mean, stealth SDS has a really low score, and I don't know what that means. Ziggler's got a pretty good score, though. I actually think I should be moving the relics further away. Like, I know that it'll it'll take longer for me to gather them all, but I've seen many Holy Line games won and lost because people put all their relics, like, in their front monastery and then it just gets, like, drebbed or something, and you lose. <laughs> nice. Grab everything. I set a gather point that wasn't supposed to be set, but I don't know. Cool. Um, could end up, you know, going for some carom bits and everything. I'm not going for a carom bit rush because that sucks. However, I guess it's okay here for map control. And if there's, I I learned from a game that I, I co-casted with Zach uh, that carom bit warriors I think it would be good versus monks because their crap value to convert our unique unit, the carom bit warrior, is a unit that costs half a population. It's the only one in the game that does. And it has terrible combat stats, it's super cheap and super quick to create. But, I mean, you can have a very, very large amount of them. And you would assume that, since they're like the worst value unit in the game to convert, that that would be a good way to deal with monks, but their 5 attack means they're just so bad they can't kill the monks. If you have Sanctity, they, the monks just don't die. <laughs> it's really funny to watch. Uh, I'll try and make some Karambits, I'll try and make everything in this game. Well, you can title this one The Complete Malay Experience and not use any of the gold we have, and instead just to sling it to our teammates. Why is no one taking any relics? <laughs> Troy is confused. Yeah, you can move the relics later, but nobody ever does. Alright, we'll build another TC. Why is no one taking the relics? Also, this is not... This is not what I... This is not what I asked for. Why is Stealth SDS not on my team? But I asked them all to rate themselves, so... Because <laughs> their ratings are all over the place. Oh, okay. Well, we have... Can't have nice things. That's fine, I guess. Honestly, I have plenty of relics, so if they all start getting denied, it's not the end of the world for me. In fact, I'll even make another monk to make up for the dead one. But I don't think I need that many. It's probably not a good place for my market, because I want it ideally, like, over here. Nice. Okay, let's get some battle elephants out. Let's get the entire... the full melee experience. That's what I would like to see. Huh? Oh. That's fine. I, I do like the idea of going for crossbows or something for map control purposes. I have too much gold, but uh, that's just because... You know what? I don't actually need any gold miners at all. But I think it's going to give me OCD if I have full gold mines in my base. So I'm going to pull one off and, and compromise, I think. And then we're just going to go imp as, as soon as humanly possible. I actually don't have handcart yet, which is bad. I should have had handcart um, approximately... I'm going to say like 20 to 15 villagers sooner if I wanted to be playing optimally. I'm going to start putting relics in my teammates' monasteries if that if they already have them. Cancel a bunch of villagers, I think, and just go in. Because I can do that now. Nice. Perfect. I'm going to do this super quickly. Just not spend the gold. Sling the team, man. <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. So, I need more stone. Was that one of my stone mines? I don't think it would be. Oh! I just realized that there are uh, stone mines over there. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And I'll send one of these guys to build a dock over here as soon as I get enough wood. 
which I just do not have. Uh, ooh, this is the latest Bosa in the universe. Not a good idea. Thank you, Alex, for subscribing to Twitch Prime, as well as uh, Lilifent. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the stream as well. Assassin, good to see you. I'm going to need all that gold when I'm throwing it away making uh, battle elephants that have no actual longevity to them. Does anyone else have a monastery? I mean, I'm assuming that's what this is. Fascinating. What, 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 why is no one... Hmm. Ugh, my upgrade timing. Not playing that great this game, but I have the feeling that this game could turn out to be good if Orange remembers the golden rule of Age of Empires 2, which is make a lot of town centers. Or maybe this game will be crap. Who knows? I'll have to try this again later. So I need a transport ship, so I can get some stone. And I wonder if I have too many farmers at this point? It's possible. Maybe I'll pull this guy away. Uh, this is a very good castle placement because it protects everything. And uh, I think we actually just want stone mining. Gold mining is relatively inconsequential here. Should have had that a long time ago, too. Also, is something you get immediately in the castle age, basically. Um... This will be where my new market is. Trading is not that important. I actually don't think I want any of those things right now. I can't imagine myself exchanging that many resources. Uh, we'll get this. Scale mail armor. Transport ship. Careening, so we carry more. Trust the opponents. I just realized, you know, I pulled a guy off a farm and I just immediately make another farm. <laughs> I don't know if my eco balance is right. And actually, I think it—I think it's still light on the food. So I think that that was a mistake to pull that villager off. I just didn't need to do that. Why are they not really contesting the relics? That's what I would like to know. I am uh, awfully confused, to be frank. I am very, very, very confused as to why they are not contesting the relics. I told them in the lobby. Uh, actually, for Karen Warriors, it's even more important that I get the defense. Do you think I want guilds? I, I overvalue guilds on a map like this just out of reflex. Because the earlier you get guilds, the more you use the market, the more money you're getting back with your better exchange rate. I did get crop rotation, good. Uh, he needs to do something about this. Okay. And uh, now we've got some of these bad boys. What's the hunt key for this? It's T. Right. We'll get Elite Karambit Warrior from the other one. And I may not have a barracks. Always a good chemistry because I'm going to need something for hard pushing. The tech cost? That's not so bad. It's very interesting that the Malay actually... Oh, okay, look at them go. That the Malay actually get uh, Bombard Cannons. They get... Uh, I believe they get Bombard Towers, but their Bombard Towers are pretty bad. Wait, right, no. Do they get Bombard Towers? They get Bombard Cannons, though, right? Bombard Cannons really help them with pushing. They do get Bombard Towers. What the hell? That's super weird. But I think it's almost necessary as part of the civilization to allow them to push, considering that their units are so low value. Force Levy will actually never do anything here. Uh, we're going to bring some of the villagers, I think, over there. I might actually buy some stone. Maybe I should have gotten guilds. Really? N none of these guys have monasteries? Yellow, you got a monastery, buddy? No? Okay. <laughs> well, we're moving out. Plate mail armor. Do absolutely no damage whatsoever. Uh, ooh. It's not. Not yet, not yet. So, to deal with this, uh, I have a lot of options. I think onagers are good, but I'm going to make a bombard cannon instead to start. Uh, onager is very, very expensive. Not sure if that's what I want. Uh, battle elephants are still kind of weak to crossbows. Because of their crap 
pierce armor. So, mm, get ballistics. Kermit warriors at least have some pierce armor, so it's not it's not too bad. Two hand swordsmen are also not a good answer. I mean, I could probably go for like skirms, but skirms are boring. I do like the idea of going for battle alleys, so I'll do that. Yeah, the Malay are interesting, though, because they have a uh, forced levy, Dark Paladin, which gives them some fascinating trash potential, but they certainly have a... I mean, it, it, they're, they're very weird compared to the Vikings, but you can certainly make that, that comparison. I mean, one of the things that makes them weird compared to the Vikings is that uh, they advance 80% faster, which is, you know, you can compare that in some way to the free wheelbarrow and handcart, and that it helps them advance faster and whatnot, but it's 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 more pronounced with the, with the Malay. We really have some insane late game, but mm, you can make the comparison, I guess. I, I don't see any reason to make any trade cards whatsoever, but I'm going to. Ask Expos, he's Britons. He's Indians. Fascinating. Alright, getting the full Malay experience. Have not researched harbors yet, but sure. Why not, why not? Why does the transport back away? Is what I would like to know. Alright, well. As soon as my bombard cannon moves up, I'm going to start poking him. So this is what you do in a situation like this. Uh, he's backing up a little bit. Is you want to poke them just a little bit with the siege from a very safe distance. And slowly lure him into your army. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. I would also like to get Elite Skirm, please. Thank you very much. Okay, cool. Oh, I am all good. Thank you. Alright. Thank you, but I'm good. Send to others. Nice. Cool. Ideally that should be a town center, but I don't I don't know. It's fine. Okay, I've got plenty of guys. You are dead, sir. I think. I mean, we'll see, but I mean, my, my heart tells me he's in deep trouble. Oh! Ooh, or maybe not. Well, I got a villager in here, so that's good. For a couple of these. Oh, maybe he's not dead. Touche, friends. Uh, so, skirms are pretty good here, and I actually might need help. Huh, alright. Helps it is. Pikemen. Squires. Tractor. Botkin arrow is good. Give it more farms. Uh, you never know. Okay, so definitely need a little bit more. Hmm, my gold income is lacking just a smidge. Oh, they actually have uh, some combat going on over there. This should be a town center. I should not be lazy. And you just never know. That's a lot of stuff. So I don't know if Karambit warriors have an attack bonus versus eagles. I actually don't know if they do. They might. Uh, I actually might need the uh, the two-handed swordsman now because they have uh, started throwing in a shitload of eagles. So that's actually kind of bad. Hmm. So actually, I do need to research forced levy. What? This is uh, an interesting situation. I do need forced levy all of a sudden. Truly bizarre. Should I have gotten that sooner? I wonder. So one, two, three, four, five. These are fives. Fascinating. I need forced levy. What? Unbelievable. I mean, I, I should be fine, but 
Yeah, super fine. But but still, like that's 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 hilarious. Cool. I'm actually getting some value here. Yeah, I'm even gonna put some uh, some harbors. Oof. This has gone mad. Oh, this is an interesting game. Ah, oh, yes, but I did lose those uh, those relics. Oh, fascinating. I actually do get to use just a little bit of everything this game, and it's in a situation where it makes sense. Uh, Ziggler needs Arb, though. What a fun little battle that was. But boy, do we have, like, some serious map control here. I think it makes sense to put a castle like, over here. Blue on gold islands. Oh, yeah, I see that. Well, we'll make some harbors. Harbors are very good because they were a, a static defense that did not cost stone. I actually do want banking. I, I'm assuming I'm going to be sending a lot of resources to people. So. What I don't like is how far away my barracks are from the front line. I actually do not like that at all. But there's not that much I can do about that. Uh, and I, I still need skirms, I think. In this army, so we're gonna push ahead now. I think. I think I'm, I think I'm ready to push. Bard towers? Oh yeah, no fish traps yet. Thank you. Uh, this is the safer one to make some fishing ships on, so I'll do that. <laughs> the harbors—they protect the fish traps. It's crazy. This is just so you don't get in there and blow up my market. There we go. Ooh, not quite. I almost have enough units to take this on, but honestly, not quite. Not quite. I actually don't have enough gold. <laughs> what a great game of Age of Empires 2. Nice. Yeah, I, I honestly don't have enough gold income. Oh, it's so fascinating. It makes me wonder if I should land over here. But I think he's got it. Uh, what is this? I should change that hotkey. It makes no sense. And uh, get gill nets. Should I call gill nets once? Gill nets makes way more sense. Like I don't know why I would think it was gill nets. Like a gill sandwich. Hmm. This is when the uh, the cheap two-handed swordsmen are just so so sick. Is my economy too small? Are we serious right now? I think actually yes. How do I know my eco is too small? Because uh, I'm not able to constantly sustain military production, so... Yeah, okay. Always adapt. And I honestly need trade cards, too. What a weird game. Uh, probably get masonry, honestly, if we're gonna go for, like, a slow... Slow-style push like this! Then that makes sense to me. Getting the full on Malay experience. Now I just need Blast Furnace. Now I just need Blast Furnace. Thank you. Cool beans. Yeah, jeez. It's those Eagle Warriors. I, I should just build the. There, there's not really enough space for me to build barracks that are closer than this, but it's kind of becoming necessary that I do that, right? Maybe, maybe I build them on this side. Ooh, this is just this is this is a weird game, man. I'm getting value out of everything. My harbors are shooting rams, and they do multiple multiple hits versus a ram. And I've got my infinite fish traps. See, I did it. I did it. The full Malay experience. <laughs> well, when people ask for Malay gameplay, you send them this one. Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> militia. Oh, whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. I need more siege workshops. I need bombard cannons. Prano. Are you kidding me? I like how stone gets devalued so fast on this. This goes out of sync. I'm actually just going to uninstall the game. This is That's the end. That's the last day of John Fire's video. Whew. Sorry, guys. I know you were enjoying them, but... Oof. Oof. 
<laughs> this is great! I'm using everything except, uh... Like, basically all my non-standard units are viable here. Yeah, I get to enjoy things such as... Ooh, I should probably juke these. I get to enjoy things such as, but not limited to, everything but Arbalest plus Siege Ram, which is generally what we see being utilized here. So... Oh, maybe I can convert a negative mm, This is gonna be tough, though. This is why I get Siege Engineers. Yeah, I'm using all the things uh, that are actually viable for the melee that you don't see all the time. Uh, the two-handed swordsmen are just such a nice touch. Very much necessary versus the eagles, and they're also just good trash units. Like they're, they're very, very good here. We have Turks with like infinite relics, so that's I hurled a little bit. That should be illegal. Bard cannons are so good here versus this army. <laughs> Go get gold, guys. Nice. What civ is this guy? Oh, that's my man. Is that not the ultimate meme strategy? The Saracen's Cavalry Archer Rush for the additional damage versus buildings? Is that not it? Has he not achieved Nirvana? Oh, no chemistry! Joker needs to get chemistry! That's one less damage that he's doing every hit versus my ult, like guys with really crap pierce armor. That's a huge, huge thing that he needs to grab. Alright, we're pushing off. Uh, maybe I overdid in Lumberjacks floating a little bit of wood now. Um, so I'm gonna delete a couple of these. Maybe our friend Ben Hearthstone needs some, some money. I don't know. It's always better to attribute your extra resources if you think your teammate might need it. And it's not worth it for me to wait for banking to do that. Because I'm just going to get the surplus again in a moment. Uh, also, in team games, man, always put a smiley face in your message. Unless you're calling your teammates bad, then that's just rude. But don't do that. A positive, happy team plays much better. Kill yourself, smiley face. So this is why Bombard Cannons are so good versus this here. <laughs> I am getting kind of, uh... Kind of dominated by those monks. But my battle elephants are pretty weak, and I have a lot of also low value conversion units mixed in here. So I'm I'm really I'm really just happy with the way this match is going. Uh, I do think though that I am not able to push out yet. Yet. Um, yeah, this would have been like the ideal game if we swapped uh, Ben Hearthstone for Stealth SDS. <laughs> Cases you're positively bad. Okay. So I got all my blacksmith upgrades, I think. Uh, I should probably tech into herb anyway. I imagine that there will be a situation where that is useful. And I said I didn't have enough bombard cannons, but I didn't really make any, did I? So I need to sell more stone. And just devalue it all the way to the ground, man. Be printing that currency. Hmm? Ah, okay. Uh, I hate having to re-micro trade cards, so that's going to suck, but uh, that's just something we gotta do. I should get Bombard Towers. I don't think I'm going to be making too many of them, mind you, but... But, but, but... This is when Siege Engineers is so important. Can I be prepared for Cannon Galleons? Okay, we'll see. We shall see. <laughs> converted that. Man, these Bombard Cannons! Paying dividends. Age of Empires 2. It's all about smart unit choices. I've, I've done everything with the melee today except make herbs, which has nothing to do with the melee as a civ identity, but it's just something that we commonly see with them due to just how quickly you can get to the Imperial Edge and go for the very standard... Uh, go for the super standard, like, herbs plus seed ramps early and power spike off all the crossbows that you already had. Um, super good. Ooh. That's why I need more two-handed swordsmen. Pull back a little bit. 
Ah, Turks are nuts on this map, though. I think Rabbit is having a field day. Is he not using his army? What are you doing, my friend? Move up a little bit. Joker is better than he said he is, and uh, we should have swapped Stealth as DS for Ben. And that would have been perfect. I wonder what his eco is. He's actually been uh, he's actually been making some plays. He's been helping out with this team. He has, which is great. Like when you're new, just man, you know, make sure you're using your army and everything. And it looks like he's got a good set of priorities. So, major props to him. I if I had to guess, if he watches this later, I think it's just eco is too small. He just doesn't have enough villagers. I'm assuming that's what it is. It, it has you have, you have to have minimum of a hundred every game, otherwise it's not enough. And I think we're going to. Is Gray like AFK? I don't I don't get it, my friends. You can't just what are you waiting for? Oh, this is funny. They have traps? Ooh, nice try. Yeah, he's still gonna get it off anyway. Ooh, he's not going for the bombard cans though. He has siege engineers, that's good. Uh does Gray have chem? He does. Alright, excellent. What 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 is he waiting for though? What are they what are they waiting for? Mmm, give me all your free juicy buildings. Finally, some good Rise of the Rajas gameplay. As I'm eating that Onager shot. Eating it up. What's nice about mixing battle... Oh, no! Almost juked it. Uh, having battle elephants in your army tends to stagger them a little bit. Juke that one really well. Oh my god, no, 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 this is not the control. No, he's walking right into melee range of my army, yes. Yes, without the coordination of your teammates, yes. And now what we're going to do is we're going to send the two-handed swordsmen over there, and then these guys over there, and... I unhotkeyed whatever my twos were, and I don't remember... Oh, those are the stables. Right. Oh, that is not the micro we were looking for. Ooh, that's a lot of idols. Gotta do something with those. This game is uh, is an interesting one in that managing your economy is... I don't know, there are a lot of things that make this game very well designed and fun, but managing your farms and eco, they actually manage to make it feel fun and not, like, tedious and busy work to me. Like, And, and maybe that's just because you have, like, the freedom of where you position farms. It's actually a fun mechanic to me, micromanaging your wood lines and everything. It doesn't feel like busy work. And I think in a lot of games it would. Okay, well. Just move out a little bit. Still not enough gold. I, mean, I should probably be on the gold mining island, if I'm being honest. <laughs> alright, friendo. Alright, alright, alright. Ah. Uh. That's a waste. So, uh, swordsmen are not really attack moving properly. What are you? Oh, don't go into the castle. Shouldn't I prioritize units over buildings? Who coded this? <laughs> I'm trying to think. Like, what's a what's a game where it's the other way around, and why? But why? Go for it. So many questions. Right. Off we are then. To the golden paradise. What do I think of siege ramps here? Uh, so the reason he's doing this, and, and Purple's making a lot of really good plays this game that I have to highlight. I mean, a, a lot of these players are. Uh, Gray's making the right units for his army. Orange has been helping out to the best of his ability. He's missing uh, a lot of upgrades, so that's Orange's thing. He probably doesn't have enough of an economy, uh, and he's just missing just a ton of upgrades. Um, and yeah, Teal's also been a real thorn in our side. He's making all the counter units. He's playing great. Uh, Red managed to secure us this island. Uh, Green's been an absolute monster with infinite gold, infinite stone turks. Is uh, as balanced as it sounds. Purple playing out of his mind. I love his army comp, I love his unit choice. Uh, I think he's missing one upgrade on his monks, but I don't know. Been a real thorn on our side. Mm, sure. 
This is nice to see that I'm getting to utilize all aspects of the melee in a way that actually makes sense for the situation. Oh, that's so funny. But yeah, with Orange, he's just missing a lot of upgrades, I think. He's missing a lot of upgrades, his economy is probably too tiny. It's probably too small. Uh, I believe the Thumb Ring does affect Skirms. I am struggling to remember this, but I believe that Skirmishers have 85% accuracy and Thumb Ring makes it 100%. Or is it just regular Skirmishers and Elite Skirmishers have 90%? Or am I getting that mixed up with archers? One of them has 85% and goes to 90%. Ooh, that's dirty. That's actually going to be a problem of some sort. This is why I put a castle over here, for the record. Uh, is all the stone gone? Okay. But yeah, that's why I put a castle over there, for the record. Which makes me think that uh, you need to put more castles in places. Otherwise, I'm going to regret it. Replace some of my lost trade carts. Uh, should just sell food wood. Move line forward by attack moving. Yeah, uh, that's a good point, Ropsy. And, and that's what's so interesting about this, is that I'm, I'm showcasing all aspects of the melee except for arms. Is that the two-handed swordsman plus skirms plus bombard cannon army comp is actually very good here. I'm playing to my strengths and it's, it's working out. I could be making bombard towers, but I don't really have the gold for that. So... What I like about battle elephants is it, I feel like it forces purple into making monks, which is taking away from his other value units, and someone has to make monks, right? And it's going to be the Aztec guy. Uh, so I'd like to think, it also takes away his attention, um, and it makes my two-handed swordsman and whatnot just better. Champion's an interesting thought. Do definitely need more BBC though, and I really don't have enough of those. Hmm. Yeah, just not enough gold miners. It's great to get just forced levy discounted kind of battle elephants, everything getting some nice nice value. The battle elephants are actually very good versus his champions. Like they're not amazing because again I've got no armor and no bloodlines, but the slight like splash damage that they do is really nice. And these are still fairly cost effective just meat shields, which I like to have. I think that uh, based off the sieves that we have here, it's nice to have some sort of meat shield. And Orange just needs his blacksmith upgrades. Purple's been a real pain in the ass this game. It's been very difficult to get through him. Uh, I need to be using Sagger Formation more, I think, to to break him down. And I'm considering White Cav, but I have some of the worst Light Cav in the game, so I am constantly considering against that. Thank you so much, Urban Cohort, for the 666. Really appreciate it. It says, Pokemon, Pokemon Masters, Pokemon are the champions. Just trying to trigger as many people as you can. Digimon had a pretty sick theme. 86%. Is this going to be a problem? <laughs> okay. I am going to need some of that red help, my friend. I think, at some point. There's the Corbic army. Oh, Red will need some help. Any kind of twist for the sub? Hmm. Twelve K in the bank, so it's guy. Okay. All right. I think Age of Empires 2 is a very good balance of mechanics that are, uh, I guess, like, skill-intensive and require a lot of micromanagement without feeling like busy work. Because when I went back and I played Age of Empires 1 again, it, it's hard to explain, and I want to be very clear that, you know, games like StarCraft 1 and Age of Empires 1 have a very loyal following for, like, a reason. They're absurdly skill-intensive, and uh, it's very difficult to play them perfectly. And I totally understand that. Like, it's just my own personal 
my own personal opinions. It doesn't make it doesn't mean you should like the game any less, or that you should be offended that I don't enjoy some of the mechanics in those games as much as you do. Uh, by all means, I, I see the case for it. Clearly, a lot of people really prefer them. I you know, it's like how in StarCraft Two you have to kind of fight the unit pathing. That's that's kind of part of the game. That you have to constantly babysit your guys, otherwise they are not going to move or path around cliffs correctly. Um, I find the, the the busy work in Age of Empires 2 to be personally the good the good kind of busy work. Things like replacing my farms, I, I feel like is is really dynamic. Uh, but I guess like StarCraft One does that pretty well. But like when I look at uh, Age of Empires One, though, is the example I'm, I'm actually going for. It, like. With Brood War, it's like a big part of the game, and I guess Nature of Empires 1 is a big part of the game, but like various things like not being able to, like, no gather points and whatnot, like, feel really terrible to me, and I guess, you know, you have to spend so much time doing all these extra, extra things that it, you could argue it increases the skill cap because you have to decide how you manage your time. If you want to do all these sick micro tricks, it's going to be at the expense of your eco, but... Uh, I feel like Age of Empires 2 makes comparatively very few sacrifices in terms of creating, like, skill-intensive, meaningful gameplay that doesn't feel like it's tedious. Like, it actually feels like it's interactive gameplay. And and this is just a, a roundabout way of me saying that I played Age of Empires 1, the original, not definitive edition, recently, and it felt really old. And I really hope that Age of Empires Definitive Edition has quite a few modern gameplay improvements. I really, really hope it does. I think that the yeah, Age of Empires 1 is fun, uh, like the campaigns are a blast, but like playing it online is really a tough, tough experience. You know, people play it on super fast speed, and it just it's a tough game to manage. And it's not... Uh, Age of Empires 2 felt like a big step forward for me in a lot of those respects. And I think that Age of Empires 1 uh, would still maintain a lot of its charm if it had you know, gather points, for example. The ability to queue up different types of units at the same building. Uh, intelligent villagers. like I, I love all those additions, but that's just my opinion. Age 2 felt like a very big step forward for me. See you, Urban Cohort. Oh! Oh, what the hell? Nice! Alright, cool. Alright, now, now, now that... Okay, we've got this now. This reminds me of when I was playing versus the devs on this map specifically, and, you know, it was a two-hour slugfest. Everybody was just so exhausted. The game was going on for, like, ever. Everyone was very, very focused. It was a super close game. And people were so focused that they didn't know that uh, one of my teammates actually managed to slip some villagers in here with, like, a transport ship, um, and he, like, walked through their base, and he built a castle in the middle of their trade line, and he stonewalled around it. And it took them around, I think, five minutes of the castle being up for them to notice, which is actually a very, very long time. I could tell you it took them, like, 30 minutes for exaggerated comedic effect, but five minutes is a really long time. And we killed all their trade carts, and didn't notice until their gold was down. They just... <laughs> Tunnel vision, man. In a game that was so, so close, that was such a troll play that uh, I thought that he... You know, I was like, there's no way that's actually going to work, and it did work. That stuff happens to me all the time. Where you're like, oh, when did this happen? <laughs> I am actually going to win a game, yes. GG well played! It's a good game. Yeah, the chariot spam on crack, like, moving super fast is... I don't know. I mean, I know that some people really like it, but I, I, it's not super duper for me. Uh, but Age of Empires 1 has a lot of charm to it, if that's your kind of game. Uh, I think that Age of Empires 2 strikes a very good balance. This is just my personal opinion. I probably shouldn't be talking about this, because I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, I, I want to be clear. I'm not one of those guys that... You know, it's like the, because I play Halo, I can't play Call of Duty type things, and I can't see the good in both sides. I'm Dr. Objective, you know, I I have my own opinions, but I totally see the appeal in that stuff. Um, but I think Age of Empires 2, in my personal opinion, strikes a near-perfect balance between uh, gameplay that requires a lot of micromanagement and therefore is very skill-intensive and satisfying 
without feeling like it's holding your hand too much, uh, I look at a lot of modern RTS games that I feel like have really dialed it back too much in an effort to maybe either make the game more approachable or more exciting to watch as an eSport, they have significantly dumbed it down a lot. And I think the Age of Empires 2 is... Like, they've, they've either made it all about military control, uh, or they've just dumbed down the game on an unbelievable level. And I think the Age of Empires 2 is so popular today because it strikes that really good balance uh, between, like, highly skill-intensive, uh, micro-intensive gameplay uh, that doesn't feel like it's holding your hand the entire way through. Uh, I like it. Like, the economy is a really in-depth thing here. Um, and that... It's nice. Age of Empires 1, Definitive Edition, I really hope that it has some significant improvements, like more than the ones that I'm aware of. So, fingers crossed. Because I, I forgot that you couldn't queue up different types of units at a building. That actually feels... It feels very tedious to me. <laughs> Play on that super fast speed. It's crazy. It is fun to watch, though. I think you did well, Corbic. Uh, it would have been nice to have some additional help from you in the middle, but it's all good. It's all good. Uh, so, Orange just... Missed the... I think this was, like, Orange's first game in my stream. I'm not sure. But, uh, first, GG well played. Second, golden rule of Age of Empires 2. The only thing you need to be aware of, the most important rule, is you need to make at least 100 villagers. 65 is actually very, very far away from 100. So, if you're listening to this right now, man, every game from now on, 100 plus villagers. 65 will never cut it ever. 0% of the time. That is the most important rule. Um... Because otherwise, you're just going to get outproduced, and we saw that here. Uh, you never got to the population cap, and there were plenty of players here who had, like, uh, more units killed and more units lost. They were just able to get a larger army in general, and this is just because stealth's eco is just way too small. Just That that makes a colossal difference. That was 100% of, of, of that game. Uh, also missing upgrades. Uh, otherwise, I think Orange, you have, like, very good fundamentals stealth. Um... You do. You used your army well. I think you made the right units. You had a wide variety of units. You were there when you needed to be, uh, which is great. So always keep that in mind. You did good work. Just get your blacksmith upgrades and definitely make more villagers. 65 will not cut it. Oh, of course, yeah. 65 is good for a community game. Yeah, good first game. Of course, how you know OP. I'm saying for in general. You know, you don't want to... It's bad advice to tell somebody that uh, 65... You know, you want to set, you want to set a good goals for them. Um, and I think that one of the first things you should learn is to just make a lot of villagers. And then as over time, then you learn where to assign them and just add some spice to the dish. But first, you must put the chicken in the oven. It's a really bad metaphor or euphemism. You must first put the chicken in the oven before you spice it. I don't know. <laughs> and he said once the villagers are overrated. Uh, it depends on what type of cav, uh, Raffalos, but best paladins are the Franks, for example. So, hope you guys enjoyed watching that one. Uh, thank you, Kanye Twist, for the resub. Really appreciate the support, as always. But we'll be right back with the next game in just a moment. I just realized, like, I'm all, like, already out of voice. Like, my allergies are so bad. <laughs> Oy vey. Alright, stay tuned, stay tuned, don't go anywhere. More Age of Empires 2 action on the way. As always, I appreciate the support, guys. Hope you enjoyed the full Malay experience. Find my live streaming schedule on my Twitch page. Please follow me on Facebook and Twitter for more updates. Stay tuned.